Today, I'd like to talk to you about the next in our series of the Mac 3 alternative. Today, it's a glass linear scales. If you watched the previous videos, as you should, you would have seen that I've gone for linear scales. So they have arrived, and I'll just open them up now and show you what's in there. They come with a bracket, different types, as you can see. Very lenient with the tolerances on the holes to line them up. I'll show you what they're for in a minute. Bag of screws, washers, a couple of shims, and a couple of peak clips to hold the cabling. That's a splash guard, sits over the top. So the way you fit them is you screw them to the side of the bed part that's not going to move, and then you screw the head to the part that does move. And these L brackets fit underneath, screw holes at the bottom there. These have also got through holes, slots, and they've got tapped holes and also hex cutouts for the nuts. So you can screw screw in the thread or you can put a nut in and screw one in that's a different size. And this has got the adjustment, so they have to be that way, that way, and that way. So you jack it up and you, sometimes you drill and tap little holes in there for adjust the screws. That's, if you've got a bed casting that's a bit wonky and they've put in the body fill and the paint and all that, you drilled your holes. Sometimes it's easier just to drill and tap four holes, put four screws in, bolt through there, that pulls it up hard and then you just adjust your four screws to get it this way and that way, rather than trying to make up a plate and trying to have it sit in a curve bit like that and rocks and rolls. And that's the easiest way to do it. Cover slides over there like that. There's a glass scale in there and it's got a little plastic lip closes over, but each time the head moves over it opens up. So if you're using mist coolant, that sort of thing that's floating around the air, it can work its way up in there, so you try to get as much protection as you can. You'll see the little red strip there, that's not only a protector to stop it from vibrating around in transport, but that's the distance that the reed head has to be away from the body, roughly one millimetre. This one's got a twist in it and all this sort of stuff. What you normally do is you mount this up, mount your bracket and leave the plastic spacer there, bolt it all up, then slide along and take the spacer out and you know you've got the right gap. These are ones I've already had before. What they say, ones we prepared earlier. The reason why I'm showing you these, even though there was lots of trouble trying to find a supplier, the information never get back to you. Two, three weeks, eBay. Hey, what's happening? Are you back in holidays? You know, where's the answer? What size is this? Do you have it in this voltage? This, that, and the other. I won't give you their name because they were the only supplier I could find who actually got back. But they got a way to go to making their business a lot better. And one of the troubles, I asked for a quote and they said, Sino and this brand, that brand, $300. And then they said, oh, we got 5 TNC or something like that. And they were the cheaper brands. And as I don't get sponsored in anything, I was all out of pocket and all that sort of stuff. So I get the cheapest I can. So they sent the list. And if you looked at your linear scales, and that's why I thought I'd show these. This is a one meter one. That's 250 mil. When they gave me the specs for the 5 TC, instead of being 250, this was 270. Instead of being 100, they had it down as 120. Instead of being 700, they were all 20 millimetre longer. So I, I contacted the supplier, I said, look, what's going on? Are these, are all the others say 100 mil, and yours say 120. Is that the right length? Yeah, 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 perfect. And this isn't Chinese guys, this is an Aussie guy here in Australia, and they should know better. But a bullshit artist is a bullshit artist wherever they come from. I said, yeah, yeah, no worries. That's, yeah, that's it. I said, everyone else cuts it in the fifth lengths, but they go in 20 steps 20 70 so yeah so okay so then you design it all up you measure it up you get the measurements because when you work out your scale you have your distance say you want to travel 100 mil as you can see here here's the slot here's this little plastic bit up the end there and it's on all of them 
cut on. You lose travel either end because the head doesn't slam up to the end of the, of the glass gap. So you'll have 100 mil of readable travel. Then I think they put 10 mil either end. So that's another 20 mil. So if you have a 100 mil scale from here to here is 120 mil. And then the end plugs are normally 20 mil. So 20, 20, 20. 20 and 100. So the overall length should be 160. So that's how you can work out if, if it's going to fit, if not. Because I have to get it to fit the travel on your, your X and your Z. And, so you have to work, it has to move that way. But your machine isn't so big. Your machine's so big and you want so much travel. So sometimes it gets down to millimeters. With me, I had the motor legs adjustment. So if you wanted to change the belt, you have to tilt the motor into the bed. And that's where the, sh the scale was. So you might be able to put the right length scale that you want but you can't change your pulley and it was getting down to millimeters the curve of the bed and where this sat fitting it was all getting down to millimeters so that's why i emphasize they say 120 because it would mean that if their 120 wasn't 120 i'd have to go up to the to the 150 scale no no yeah no worries yeah yeah, yeah that's what they say yeah that's the travel all up so you design all up you, you draw all up they all come in different configurations you can have different plugs like i mentioned to you before these are the D sub ones, these are the nines. The back had, may have a D9 or the round one, so you have to match all them up. They have the signal, and as we said, TTL or RS422, different signals coming out. Then you have this brand, then you have this brand. You think it'll all be standard. Some decide to put plus five volts on that pin. Somebody else will put it on the pin over here, and some might put it over there. And some might have A here or B there. Or so if you put it in a, a different brand readout, you can blow everyone up. Like where's where's the standard engineering standards? You know, plug one, pin one is five volts. Pin two is zero volts. Pin three is A. Pin the ones that don't use the full complement like I've got, they're empty pins. So they shift it all around. So then you have to make sure. So that's why I'm showing you this. This is a different brand. That's why I'm not plugging that in because I'll have to jump on the wires. And as, it, as it's just turned up, I, I decided not to do that. This plug looks the same as this plug, but it's totally different. And if I plug this into that, one of these two will blow up. I have to make sure I have the right plug. How am I going to make it up to the controller? Well, with the controller, it has a 27, I think. So I have to make up an adapter to this to go from a double adapter into a single adapter and then up this adapter I have to run out off more wires to run off somewhere else and these cables I don't know about this how long these cables are so if the control is sitting up there and I've got 10 foot of this cable now I've got the other black cable I've got another 10 foot there's lots of cable and you might say oh, okay and this is a trouble I'm coming across and if you watch the video on the stack light I wanted to have that sitting on top of the controller box just sitting up there the cable that runs with that information for the stack light is 10 foot long and it goes up to somewhere else so then I'd have to have another cable 10 foot back into the box just to do this so having the, the D subs are good from the manufacturer's point of view because instead of having rows and rows of screw terminals they only put a little plug but the problem then becomes yours and if you want the information here but it has to go way down there and come back again it's starting to become a pain an alternative yes it's starting to be a pain in our alternative that's what i'm waiting for on adapters and all this sort of stuff to come so that's why nothing sort of moving along it's being delivered sits in the box waiting for the next thing to happen getting back to the actual scales so like i said millimeters here millimeters here you can get different styles so even though you may have a 200 millimeter one and even though the signal is different and the wiring's different and the plugs are different you then can also have different bodies and i went for the slim line also on the glass scale the graduations i went for the final one on the x when you turn you normally measure diameters and they're normally a lot more accurate than depths now something you measure to face it off it can be you know a bit here a bit there but diameters are normally more spot on that's one reason the second one is that the whole tool moves in now if you move it in one thou you actually are taking two thou 
thou off. So if you move along the Z and you face off, you move one thou, you take a thou off. But the other direction, your scales need to be more accurate. Your divisions need, need to be smaller. I went for a 0.001. Fine scale, coarse scale. Fine ones can also be a problem, is jitter. You do a Jurassic Park, get a glass of water, put it on the head of your machine and see if it's getting vibrations. If it is, they can cause jitter on your scales. So in other words, you're getting the vibration and is it 0.01 or is it 0.02 or so, and that can make your, your readouts jitter and all that sort of stuff. So software has to overcome that and going for the positive and the negative signal also helps make that less of a problem. So then you can get yeah, the same length but in small bodies. There's three sizes, uh, normal, slim and uh, you can call extra slim but there's as you get down, it's it's not much of a drop. I ordered two slim bodies. So I know they, these are wrong. They've come. They sent me one slim body and one normal body. There's about five mil difference. And there's a couple of mil in the head. So if I just put that on the top, you can see that where you've got a gap, you have to slide along. That can make a big difference. It may clear it, but then if you have swarf and all that, this will be plowing through the swarf as it's coming off the chuck. To get a slim body, the RS422, and to get the 0.01, it's about another 30 to 50 bucks over the normal price. You have to really weigh it up. I said, okay, I'll bite the bullet and I get it. They arrive, DHL, all that sort of stuff. I open them up and they were the two, two different sizes. Then I read on the scale, the part numbers were FDSE-120-470. Then the part numbers are MTS-Es, completely different part numbers. And then it, instead of being dash 120 or 470, it says, Length 450 mil. So I order 470, they deliver 450. I order slim body, they deliver normal body. So don't worry, I pulled the plug apart to see if all the wiring were, was there because you, you can't tell whether that's a TTL or a RS442 unless you pull out and all the pins are wired up. So it's the RS422. So I remember, oh, well, look, you know, they, yeah, they're the right ones. I said, no, they're not. They're supposed to be, oh, they're the same. I said, you, I told, you told me that for 120 was 120 now it's 100 oh yeah it's same 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 but different it's just what they had laying around and they just sent it to me is basically what it was i didn't pay the extra 30 dollars for the slim body on this one so that's that's a problem is it going to fit or is it not going to fit it's 50 50 at the moment for this one is it going to make it with the travel again why is it important because with these other scales this is the one meter one you got two of these, and this is the 200 mil. Come with the kit. This whole kit, the drone, these two big scales, was about 50 odd bucks cheaper than just these two scales. So that's the sort of price difference you're talking. So I thought I'd explain it to you with this one. So imagine this, it's this one, but we got this one. Let's see if you can see the readout. So the idea that it works, and this is a problem, is that the positioning of the bullet controller comes off a servo motor encoder, and I'm trying to get it to come off a scale. And they say, yeah, that's okay, but it has to have a, a pulse every 10 millimeter maximum, and I'm hoping that this pulse is just one every 400 mil. I may have to put an encoder on the actual ball screw shaft. That's another problem we'll come to. But the other idea of this was that I use this for the home switch. Now on the scale, you have your light. And as you move along, you can see, touch the tool, let's say, bang, you zero, zero it to take off you know, that much. But then you want to send the tool home. So where's home? Absolute position is the absolute and there's the incremental. You won't find home, because you're only checking, oh, that's where you said it was zero, or oh, that's where we are now. Oh, that's where you said you are zero. So if you move 20 mil from where you said you were zero there, it's different from when you move 20 zero from there. So normally on your machine, you'll have a little switch, it'll come along, click, come off, and then it will set that to zero. All glass scales have a reference mark. And if you look at the scale, I've got a little, this one's got a little triangle, these old cheapo crapos have got a little dot. That's where the read head is inside there. That's where the little transistor, light sensitive transistor is picking up the mark. So on the scale, and that's why I've got this one because I've pre done this. I put this one on cross slide, the X axis. This is where the operator is. This is where the spindle is and take a cut. So when I want to go home, setting the machine up, 
You use the reference setting in your drug. The drug will read the hard position of that line on your scale, so it always knows where it is. So you should always do that on. So I want to use that reference mark, that mark on the glass. Now when I say home, on one of these pins comes the reference mark, so it only goes on when it touches. So I say go home in, in that direction, and it'll travel, and nothing, 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 nothing. Beep. There it is. There's my home. The machine is set. So I have one scale that is accurate positioning of it. So if I've got one inch black slack in the screws, the scale doesn't move. So it should be a lot more accurate that way. The problem is, of course, that that position on that scale depends on where it is on the scale. On this scale, it's there. So what? What happens if it's the other end? When I want a home, it will plow into the, the chuck. So, okay, you spin your, your scale around that way. You say, all right, what happens if it's way down here? Well, then you have to position it manually away from any job, zero it, and then tell it in the controller, home is 50 millimeter plus from that signal, or seven so I'll hone there and just add that amount to it. But then, okay, you've changed the scale. What happens if the reed head pointing that way? As you can see, see the curve? Now I was only talking about millimetres underneath here. Here we've been talking about another 20, 30 mil. So apparently what you can do is unscrew one end plate, slide the reed head off, turn it around, slide it back in and then screw it in. So then I will be able to make the mark the end I want and have the cable because if I have it sitting like that when it comes through the wiring won't get that messed up. But if you have it the other way around you're going to have a lot more messed up wire to grab around swarf or all that sort of thing that's where the slim bodies was very important to me that's where the 30 bucks i saved may not be worth it but that's what this journey is all about the good the bad and the ugly i could try fitting the, these all up but if i haven't got the adapters it's no use trying to sort that out if you don't take the minus b and the minus a signal out and you run the, the right a's to the right ins and five volts and all that to the right there so you make up your adapter and wire it up correctly you can just then run one it off the drone once you know what the pinout is and I'll, I'll do that then i'll slide it along and i'll find the home position the reference position i'll mark it then i can work out where i have to make up brackets which way it has to go and all that so do as much as what you can on paper on your computer before you start drilling holes in the wrong position and ripping things out and cutting things off that you have to weld back on that's what they are that's how big they are the difference as you can see it's become an expensive journey not an easy one as jfk said we do them not because they are easy because they are hard if you subscribe you'll get your questions answered and as always thanks for watching